Notion is amazing to organize information. If only you didn't have to manually enter it first. Let's be real. Life is far too short to spend your time copy-pasting information from one tool to another. So in this video, we're fixing that. You learn how to take any kind of information, for example, an email attachment or a screenshot from your phone, and automatically add that data to Notion. Ready? Let's dive in. Now, this method works with any kind of data, whether it's a PDF, a screenshot, or a photo. And the overall approach is super simple. First, we send an email with the attachment to a specific email address. Then, we use AI to extract all the relevant information. And last but not least, we add that information to Notion. Let's start by quickly setting up our databases in Notion. In this case, it's super simple. So let's just create a database and let's call it uh, invoices. And then for now, to just keep it simple, let's have just two properties. We'll uh, delete this tag one. And then we just have the name of the invoice or the, what it's about. And then we have the, um, blah, 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 blah. let's have the uh, amount, uh, amount paid. And maybe let's add um, also a date property. Perfect. And then we can delete these entries and then we are ready to add the first information. Next, we need to set up some things for our email. And in this example, I will be using Gmail, mainly because it's super simple to set up. And even if you don't use Gmail as your primary email, you could just create a free Google account just for this purpose. But of course, you could do the same with Outlook uh, and swap out the corresponding steps. What we basically need to do is we need to create a rule to apply a label to every email that has one of the screenshots from which we want to extract data. And the easiest to do so is to make sure that whenever we send an email, we put like a certain keyword in it. So for example, extract, right, or invoice, and then create um, a search. So the way we, you can do this in Gmail is uh, you can go up here where it says search email and you can click on this filter icon. And here you can say, okay, everything that will have the subject line, yes, let's say, um, you know, uh, extract uh, invoice in it. Um, this should um, have, uh, and we will create a filter. And here, what we want to do is we want to apply a label. And the label that we want to apply is the um, extract uh, data label. And then we can create that filter. So now, whenever we get an email with that uh, word, like extract uh, invoice in the subject line, we will automatically apply the label. And that's pretty much all the processing we need to do. So as you can see, I have already like two test emails in there. Where I have that. So here, uh, it didn't <laughs> download because it thought it was uh, stealing personal information. I sent this email to myself. <laughs> so let's actually uh, quickly download it. Oops, uh, look safe. All right. Uh, and you can see I have this invoice here where I paid uh, some money for uh, dry cleaning lots of stuff. So good example of this to test the flow. Time to add a little bit of AI magic into the mix. The tool that we're going to use for this AI magic is called Relay.app. And it's a new automation app that I just found out about recently and looks really promising. Now, as you know, usually I build most of my automations with Make, and that's an amazing tool. And you could certainly just uh, create this same flow there. But for this specific use case, I actually thought I will show you Relay app because it's super simple to get started and they have a lot of things in there that sort of flatten the learning curve. So in particular, if you were hesitant of doing any automations before, this should make things so much easier. Plus, they have an amazing free plan so you can do all of this, including the AI part of it, for free without having to sign up to uh, ChatGPT or like to OpenAI separately. The link for Relay app is down below in the description. Once you're logged into your account, this is what you'll see. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new workflow. So we click on this button in the top right corner and then we get on the interface builder. And as you can see, this looks a little bit more like Zapier than it does like Make. So it means like less of the visual elements, but still quite intuitive to build anything. And we'll actually quickly type this. So let's do uh, say call extract invoice uh, data to Notion. Perfect. Now we add a trigger and that's what will start our flow. In our case, that will be whenever a new email gets that label. So we click on add trigger. And then we can look for Gmail. It already pops up here for me because I connected it. Otherwise, you can just type Gmail to look for it. And then the action you want to add is label edit. And then once you have that, you probably need to authorize Gmail first if you've never used a Relay app before. That's super simple. You can just go through the process. But one quick tip. If you use, uh, if you use a different Gmail account uh, than the uh, domain with which you signed up to um, uh, relay that app, so let's say, for example, you sign up with uh, hello at Matthias Frank for relay, but you have like just some random Gmail account, um, then you actually uh, need to add a separate user. That's because relay app is still quite new. So the way they handle different connections isn't fully fetched out, but uh, it's still very straightforward. All you can do all you need to do in this case is you need to go to your ops settings here, add another user and invite uh, as that user the person with the specific Gmail <laughs> that you created 
just for this purpose. And even on the free plan, you have two users, so it should be no problem. All right, so once you manage to uh, connect Gmail, if you have any issues with it, please leave a comment in the uh, comment down below. I'll try to help you. Uh, but once it's all authorized, we can say, okay, trigger run when a label is added, and then we can select the label that we want. In our case, we will look for the uh, extract data label that we created previously. That's pretty much it, what we need to set up. So you see, it automatically pulls in a preview of the emails that we already have here. And we can could set up additional filters, right? If we say, okay, only certain emails, only certain stuff, but for us, in our case, this is good as a trigger. So we can just uh, move myself again, click on done and finish this step. With our email successfully pulled in, we can then use AI to process it. So we add another step. And in this case, we could just go for OpenAI, right? You can connect your own uh, OpenAI account. But the nice thing uh, with Relay is that they actually give you these built-in AI actions, which is also OpenAI in the backend, but you don't need to, well, create your own account. So within uh, limited usage, this is perfectly fine. And what we want to do is we want to write our custom, custom, <laughs> custom prompt. And here we want to pick as our model uh, GPT 4.0, so the latest one. If you watch this at a later point in the video, you might want to update to whatever the latest model is at that point. And then we can write our prompt. And then here we can do a fairly simple one. So we can just say, you are an expert personal assistant who extracts um, relevant data from invoice uh, screen or invoice images. Um, please uh, extract the total amount uh, paid and the topic of the invoice of the attached image. Perfect. So this is the basic ones. And now what we can do, and this makes it here a lot more, uh, a lot easier and more intuitive <laughs> than if you had to do this in make, is to you can add, add additional context. And here we just have the uh, previous step, right? Our email values. So we can go on email and we can say, okay, please, the attachment from that email, uh, add that into the mix of the prompt. We don't need minimum access for this purpose. And then again, super, super cool. We can define the output, which makes it so much easier for structured data, right? Otherwise, we would need to ask it, okay, please always respond in this and that way, uh, only in JSON. Then we would need to pass it JSON. Whereas here, super simple, we can just say add a field and we want first a text field. And this text field should be the um, the topic. And then uh, we want another field and that should be a number and that should be the total amount paid. Perfect. We can save both these things and then for the rest of it, we can just click on done and then we can test the whole flow once to see whether it works properly. All right, in order to test this, let's click on test this step and then we will search for our extract email. Perfect, and then we can test this and then we see whether the AI module successfully can get the information. Perfect, so this is what we get. We have the topic, dry cleaning and the total amount paid 127 euros. Perfect, that looks great. So with that out of the way, we can add the next step and that is just to fill the data into Notion. So let's add Notion. And again, if you haven't connected Notion yet, you will be prompted to authorize Notion. Uh, super simple. The one thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you select the specific database that you want to give this access to where you want to update your data. And you can always double check that it ha that really has access to your database by going to Notion and then clicking on the three dots on the top corner and then scrolling down here under connections, you should see Relay app. If not, then uh, one, after you go through Relay through authorizing Notion once, you can always then go to connect to and then search for Relay and it should pop up there. And if not, refresh the browser once, wait one or two minutes, and then you should be good to go. Back in the Relay app, we are selecting now Notion and then add page to database. And here we want to select uh, our da -da -da, invoice database. Perfect. And now we can choose which fields to populate. So if you're familiar with other automations, right, it works exactly the same here in Make. We can map our content from previous steps to the fields from Notion. So I say, okay, for the name field, I would like to um, enter the um, blah, 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 uh, the method at uh, a topic. And then for the amount paid, I would like to enter the um, total amount paid. And you see how easy it is because we can in the previous step in the AI step, determine certain output fields, makes it much, much easier to map it here other than having to, you know, create our own structured data. And then last but not least, for the date, to keep it simple for now, I will just uh, have to set the date always to the current, uh, to, to now, right? So I will always set this to workflow run to the start date whenever uh, it like gets a new email. That means, right, I need to send the email uh, right when I get the invoice. We could also like extract that, but for now, let's keep it simple and then just click on done. And now we have the whole thing set up so we can actually start a test run. In order to start a test run, we simply click on, well, start a test run. And here we can uh, now select one of the emails. I have already an email with a specific label in my account. If you don't have that, make sure to send an email to uh, your Gmail address 
with um, the subject line that you know uh, you set in the rule for the label authors, label an existing email. And then we can select this one and say, yes, uh, please take this one. Uh, this looks good. And let's uh, create a test run here and uh, see where that goes. So we have now here the option uh, to click again on start run. And now it will trigger at once. Uh, always takes a second with the ChatGPT until the response comes. But then we should hopefully be able to see that response back in Notion. All right, now at the Notion step, running the automation here. And if we go back uh, to Notion, we should in a second see this actually pop up here if everything works correctly. Perfect, we got a complete message here. And then if we go to Notion, we have here, okay, possibly laundry or dry cleaning services, 127 bucks. Perfect. I mean, on my screenshot, right, it didn't show exactly the name of the service it had, so it had to take a guess here. But uh, that is pretty good to get, like, quickly the information from our screenshot right into our Notion setup. This was now the basic flow to automatically add invoice data to Notion. But you can adapt this approach any way you want. Let's say, for example, you're using UltraHuman, a cool smart ring that tracks your sleep. Each day, UltraHuman shows me a detailed report of my sleep on my phone. And if I want to have that in Notion, all I need to do is slightly adjust the automation. We mainly need to modify the prompt so that it extracts the relevant sleep information rather than the invoice data. And then we can use the same setup to add the information to our sleep or habit tracker in Notion. Now, this video isn't sponsored by UltraHuman. I'm just a big fan of them. If you want to check them out, I will link down below in the description. So let's quickly adapt our Notion backend for it. So I added a screenshot here just to have it in mind. And then let's create a new database. And this could be, you know, our sleep tracker. And here again, we have, uh, let's put a date in the front one. And then uh, for the other properties, uh, I want to have a bunch of number properties. First number that I want is my uh, sleep score, right? The total score, in this case, 93. Then I want uh, to have my uh, wake time. I want to have my um, REM sleep and then my, oops, uh, my light sleep. And finally, the uh, deep sleep property. And of course, right, if you have a habit tracker set up, you can just integrate it with your existing system. But for this demonstration, let's set up a fresh database, quickly realign them, and then we can modify the automation. In this case, I will actually create a new workflow. So I go back here to my main menu and then for my, um, for my uh, you know, extract invoice data, I will take that one and I will uh, just uh, duplicate it. So we can quickly have the same basics. I will rename this to uh, extract sleep data. And of course, right, uh, if you have this, then you could in your uh, Gmail account create a different rule for like if you have sleep data or if you only want this, then you can keep it with the one label. In this case, I will just keep it with this one label. So I'm not changing anything here, but I will change now here something for the ChatGPT prompt. So here, what we have is we will say, okay, Please, uh, you uh, are an expert um, personal assistant who extracts sleep data from uh, um, uh, app uh, screenshot. Uh, take a look at the attached uh, screenshot and extract. And then we want the uh, sleep score. And then we want our uh, awake time and minutes and our uh, blah, 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 our REM sleep, our light sleep, and our deep sleep, always time and minutes. I was going to take this, and I'm going to copy it here. And then again, right, in order to make it easier in the next step to use the data, I will define the output. So instead of total amount paid, what we'll uh, put in here will be the uh, sleep score. Save topic will change to um, awake, uh, a number, and then we will add uh, REM sleep safe. Um, oops, that was wrong. Sorry. <laughs> that should be light sleep, light sleep, and then last but not least, deep sleep. And of course, right, you can set up as many of these extractions, whatever data you need to get into Notion. Super simple, uh, super quick. And <laughs> thanks to the basic uh, plan relay, mostly free, unless you have a ton of data to extract. And here again, right, we want to test this step once. So um, we will go in here and I will search again for, oops, now an extract email. Uh, let's see which one it has to extract sleep data. Perfect. And we run this test once and see whether it's able to get everything from the screenshot. Now, while we're waiting for this response, one tip to make it easier, <laughs> that was quick, uh, to get like proper data is to make sure that you have always like the sort of same layout, right? And that it's very clear which element there is. Sometimes you might need to give additional input for the prompt but for the most part, it should be fine. So we see we get everything here. And even better, you see in the uh, screenshot here, we have like hours and minutes. 
and the AI is able to just do the math for us, right, and turn like one hour, 37 minutes uh, into the corresponding uh, 97 minutes. Perfect. So we can click on done and then we just need to change here now because we are, of course, like mapping the wrong values to the wrong database. So we switch the database from invoice to sleep tracker and then the fields to populate will be, in this case, the as a name. I just want to fill the, um, again, the date uh, when this runs. Um, and then we will fill the other values. Oops. Start with sleep score. That should be um, our sleep score. We want our awake time for the awake. And then um, it's REM sleep. Da, da, da. Should have taken something with less numbers <laughs> so you don't have to watch me do all of these. But uh, just for practice, <laughs> we'll add them all in. Uh, light sleep and last but not least, uh, deep sleep. Da, 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 da. Deep sleep. There we go. Uh, and then we can uh, just need to quickly click once and authorize. Click on done. And then we are good to go. Again, ready to test the whole thing. So click on start test run. We again pick uh, the right uh, email to test this with. Uh, making sure that this has the right data, right? Not not the uh, the invoice screenshot, otherwise it will be confused. And then wait a few seconds for this to process. All right, this was much bigger than expected. It's already ready. And here we see now sleep tracker. Today, uh, my sleep score, 93. That works. Awake time, 20 minutes. Perfect, 97, 325, and 66. Extracted everything perfectly. And this is great, right? Because uh, as much as I love the ultra human app and to see it in there, sometimes I want to have, you know, the larger trend within my uh, other system, right, with all the other uh, habit data that I might track. So I could just add this now to the remaining habit tracker where I track everything else. And then I can use the charts that often assume the release of it to visualize everything or, well, do anything I want with the data. So, and really, really cool to get things out of an otherwise locked system into your other notion system. And if this use case is particularly interesting to you and you now want to build a perfect habit tracker in 2024, well, I also have a video for that. Just click here and I'll see you in a few seconds.